Assalamualaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. So in this video, we're gonna learn something super cool. And honestly, it feels almost illegal to make this video. Why? Because uh, when I figured this out for the first time, I was honestly amazed. And uh, I'm talking about how you can use your calculator to check your answer of normal distribution questions. Okay. Now, emphasis on the word questions because uh, on the word check. Why? Because there these are questions that are worth three to five marks. And you know, a five mark question in S1 is a big deal because that's literally 10% of your paper. So if you are somehow able to check and be sure that you've solved a five mark question correctly, you're going to feel more confident. And when you approach the following question more confidently, the chances of you getting that question right will obviously go up exponentially. So that's the whole idea. That's, that's why I keep on emphasizing uh, I keep on um, encouraging students to find out all the features that their calculators are, are packed with so that you can use them to their full potential and check whatever it is in the exam that you can and be sure that you've done it correctly. So here I have a normal distribution question. The first part is of five marks and we're gonna see how we can use your calculator. So let's read the question. Let's extract important pieces of information and then let's start plugging in the values in the calculator. So tire pressures, uh, tire pressures on a certain type of car independently follow a normal distribution with mean 1.9 bars and standard deviation 0 0.15 bars. Find the probability that all four tires on a car of this type have tire have pressures between 1.82 bars and 1.92 bars so that means x is normally distributed here i've written the information this is the mean and we write the variance and what we're going to do is so basically this these are the x values we're going to convert these x values to z values we're going to find out the z scores by using the formula so x is equals to z is equals to z is equals to x minus mu upon sigma. Okay, and then we will basically use the table, the z table, and uh, find out what the answer is. Now you still have to do that, okay? And here, by the way, I have written the answer, so I can show you that we will you will get the correct answer when we use your calculator. So what you do is, you open your calculator, press menu, and if you have one of those calculators where which has this feature, then you will see distribution. So you'll see a bell curve, at number seven with distribution. So you press that, you go on to normal CD. Okay, and now let's first study the values that we have to enter over here. So there's the lower limit, that means the lower value, lower limit of X, the upper limit of X, the standard deviation, which is sigma and mean, which is mu. So that's the symbol that we use for standard deviation and mean. Now, what's the lower limit? That's 1.82, so type that, press equals to. What's the upper limit? 1.92, type that, press equals to. What's the sigma? What's the standard deviation? And that is 0 0.15. And then what's the mean? That's 1.9. And that's it. Wait for the magic. Press the equals to sign. There you go. 0 0.256. That's the answer. That means your calculator has done all the hard work for you, which you still, by the way, have to do. Okay, but now you can be 100% sure that you've done it correctly. Okay, so this was one example. And like I said, you know, every time I do this, I'm honestly surprised. Uh, that a lot of students aren't aware of this and uh, they're missing out basically. You know, there's no, there are no two ways about it. They're just missing out. Now, here I have another question, which I'm going to solve because in this question, there's an important concept that we have to learn. So it says the daily minimum temperature in degrees Celsius in a city is a random variable with distribution minus 15.1 and 62.0. Now be careful, minus 15.1 is the mean and 62.0 is the variance. And in our calculator, we enter the standard deviation. And we have to find out the probability that the randomly chosen day in January has minimum temperature above zero degrees Celsius. Okay. So above zero degrees Celsius means that we know what it's greater than, but we don't know what it's lesser than. So that means we have the lower limit, but we don't have the upper limit. So what do we do in that case? Well, you enter the lower limit, what you see, which is zero. Now, if there is no upper limit given, you enter an extremely large value. It could be 1 million, 10 million, 100,000, doesn't matter. You'll notice that you always get the same answer, okay? And then as far as the standard deviation is concerned, which is sigma, that's square root of 70, uh, 62. As far as the mean is concerned, which is mu, that's minus 15.1. And there you go. Press equals to sign one more time. And that's it. Your calculator has done all the hard work, which by the way, you still have to do. But here you can see that's what the correct answer is. So basically, once we convert this into the Z score, because it's greater than, we'll have to do one minus, because remember, the Z table always gives you the area up until that point. So if you want the area after that point, you subtract it from one. Okay, so your calculator does that for you and it gives you the answer, which correct to three significant figures is 0 0.0276. Now another question, let's see what this says. 
it is given that x is normally distributed and we're given the mean and we are given the we're given the mean and we're given the variance so what do we do here's what we do and we have to find out the probability that a random chosen value of x is less than minus 2.4 okay so the reason why i've chosen this question is because here we're given the upper limit we know what it's supposed to be less than but we don't know what it's supposed to be greater than so first let's write the upper limit which is minus 2.4 now when you don't know the lower limit you enter an extremely negative value so minus 1 million 10 million doesn't matter as long as it's extremely negative now what about the standard deviation so once again remember that you're always given variance so the variance is 3.2 squared that means the standard deviation is 3.2 and the mean is 1.5. There you go. Press the equals to sign one more time to see the magic. And that's it. We have the answer. And zero, that's 0 0.114 or 0 0.111 correct to three significant figures. So yeah, that's, that's uh, basically pretty much it. And uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you were aware of this feature to begin with. And uh, there is a way that, so in some cases, you have questions where you have to find, you have to read the table backwards. So if you've done this chapter, you would know that sometimes you're given the probability and you have to find out the z-score and you do that when you are supposed to find out the mean and the standard deviation. So there's a way you can do that also. And we're going to learn that inshallah in another video. But uh, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Allah Hafiz.